You know, you ask me, do I prefer the soft tip or a spring bobber? Oh, man. Great question. <laughs> Well, I, I guess I'm, for panfish, I'm more of a spring bobber kind of a guy. Um, it seems to me like the problem is, is bite detection isn't just down, it's also up. So to me, that spring bobber is just that much more sensitive, especially when they, they come up and the, the line goes slack. And that's a little hard to see with just a, a really sensitive rod even, or a really limber rod. It just doesn't, the, the weight of the jig doesn't load that rod enough to see that, that back pressure. So I guess I would go with spring bobber. Huh. Two part answer, uh, spring bobber when things are super psycho negative. Uh, I fished with Key Kong, a good buddy of mine, last year early ice, and he kicked our tails on spring bobbers. And we had Great bite detection, power noodle type varietals that are awesome for detecting bites, seeing up hits. We were still not seeing what these big bluegills were, who were kind of just breathing on our baits and hitting it, double clutching, and he was just nailing it. But for most purposes, I don't like a spring bobber. It's in the way. Uh, they ice up, line loops over the top of them. If I can get away with not having to use a spring bobber type rod, I don't do it. You know, I'm a little weird in this in terms of bite detection. I actually like to go to no stretch lines. I like actually stiffer rods. They're more sensitive. You're not, it's not a visual bite to me, it's a, it's a feel bite. So I spend time looking at the sonar. I'm watching that Garmin and I'm watching those lines come together and then I'm expecting to bite that way. Uh, spring bobbers, I've used everything from boar hair, you know, in the world championships to, you know, some of the high tech things. I, I'm not a fan of spring bobbers, don't like them. I hate wimpy rods, I, I, a, a softer tip is fine. But for me, it's all about the feel and not, not the vision. And I know I'm in the minority, but it works for me and that's what I like. Uh, that's I, the double-edged sword with, with that. So there's some times where on super light, high pressure days, I mean, everyone in this room has, has seen that where spring bobber has a time and a place. Um, spring bobbers can also be a large pain in the butt to deal with. So 80% of the time I'm going preferably with uh, uh, precision power, fiberglass, tapered tip to bite detect. Now, if it's, I mean, you have a bunch of different factors in there. Wind, cold, I mean, in a perfect scenario, if I had one rod to go to all the time, would be, it would be my precision noodle. Fiberglass rod, yeah. I prefer personally, and it depends what I'm using for a bait, right? So like, let's say I'm using a heavy spoon and I'm fishing for big perch. I like a stiff, stiff, soft tip rod, you know? Um, but if I'm fishing a real tiny tungsten, uh, maybe with a piece of plastic and I'm trying to finesse fish, I am all about having a super ultra spring system on. So I'm, you know, when I'm finesse fishing, I like the springs, but when I'm going, you know, heavier, heavier tungsten, heavier spoon. I kind of I say you want to match the rod to the application or style of fishing you're using. Uh, probably neither. You know, stiffness equals sensitivity. You know, and, and I'm, I'm in the feeling, the jig is what I'm in the feeling. So, you know, take a good tungsten jig and some, some good uh, thin line. We won't even give a pound test because it's relative to this, how heavy the jig is so that it hangs straight and a little short quivering motion that I give it, I actually feel that jig going boom, 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 boom. Now I'm, I'm really focused on that because I'm, I'm watching my Vexilar, I know there's a fish down there that's looking at my jig, so I'm really focused on this. And all of a sudden I don't feel that boom, boom, boom anymore, it just goes dead. It's amazing how it takes a split second for that to go up your arm to your brain and back to your hand and set the hook. There, there's, but you know, you got a fish on. But after several fish, it's like touching something hot. If you touch something hot, you don't go, oh, that's hot. You, oh, you pull your hand back right away. Same thing happens with the, you know, all of a sudden you set the hook, you don't hardly know why, but you got a fish on because the, the, the jig went away. And it's the, the little short jigging motions, I don't know, my finger here, you know, going like this. You know, a lot of the creatures in the water, the zooplankton, they can't, they got to keep moving their arms and stuff to maintain their level if they quit moving the thing, they start sinking. You know, so this little motion is something they're used to seeing down there. I have uh, three bite detectors, I say, in my arsenal. So the one is the spring, the Legend Ice Rods with the spring. It's revolutionized guys ice fishing hands down across the country. Um, and 
so a spring is one way to see more bites, and I feel uh, you're going to see more bites. So I, I'm a firm believer, no matter what you want to use, bite detection is key. You have to have a bite detection system in place. Um, so there's also the noodle tip for a visible lift of a soft rod, um, but there is also what's what's we call in the tournament world tight lining. So tight lining is a little schoolie reel, short 20 inch stick with high vis line. Um, and they wiggle the line, the line is the bite detector. So uh, there's only three things that are gonna stop your line from going down. The bottom of the lake, a weed, and a fish. So they watch their line and, and to really truly learn a visible bite detection technique, you should, you should eliminate your flasher. You should get rid of electronics. So you can focus on watching for the visible bite. If you're not focused on watching for the bite and you're watching a screen, you're gonna miss bites. So if you, if you take it away and you only focus on wiggling your spring or your line or your noodle tip, and you focus on that and presenting the lure properly, your catch rate will go up insanely. You're focused strictly on watching for a bite. You're not. You're missing bites by watching screens and watching other stuff. Even when you see them coming, you, you know, and you see, there's a lot of bites you're going to miss by wearing gloves and and thinking you can feel them. So visibility of the bite detection is 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 huge to me. Um, I pair high vis line with my springs, and I've got the whole line of like the the glass noodle Saint Croix rods. And, um, you know, I just, I always go back to the spring. The noodle tips just don't, I don't know, they, they don't present the same to me. It's really a mushy tip and I can't get the jig control I like. And guys say you lose jig control with a spring, but I don't think so. And In most cases, I like to use spring bobbers. I think that there are so many times where especially crappie fishing, where the bite is, is weightless, where literally the bobber goes from uh, a position of being down and then all of a sudden lifts. Those are the types of bites that are very difficult to feel on even the most sensitive rods with real small tips. I like a rod where I have total control over the bait, so if I'm fishing with a tungsten bait, I would like something with a little bit of a stiffer tip than just like your noodle rod. Um, it's not that I don't like spring bobbers, because certainly there are applications where spring bobbers are, are more than needed and I, I, I've used spring bobbers in instruments, but what I really want to have with whatever bait I'm fishing, especially for panfish, is total control over that bait. So, um, you know, with the tungsten, I, I want something that I've got a little bit of a tip there, but it's not going to sag, and then I want backbone that starts right at the second or third guide at the most, so I get instant hook setting power. I would say more often than not, uh, an indicator tip, something that has a little color to it, I can see the line move, and you know, my eyes aren't as good as they used to be, If I can't see that. I'm always using my aqua view and down view mode when I'm fishing panfish, and I'm watching a bite. When everybody's whiffing, I'm setting the hook, almost 100% hook up, so I guess you could give me a broomstick and I'm gonna catch all those fish. So my bite detection is visual because I'm seeing them in any depth of water, down viewing. I personally like the rod that has the real soft tip. I, I, uh, I think the spring bobbers had its place in, in the growth of those style of rods, but I personally right now, I like a very soft tip rod. It gives me a little bit, uh, if you keep an eye on it, uh, you're, you're watching and you can get this, the sequence of the bite on that soft tip rod just almost exactly like you did with the, with the spring bobber. So um, that's my preference right now is I like real soft tip rods when I'm fishing pan fish. I generally use more fast action tips um, only because of the fact that spring bobbers in my my use of spring bobbers over time, I, I tend to bend them, break them, do all sorts of things. Now, I, there's a lot of newer ones, truthfully, that are on the market that I have not played with, so maybe I need to go back and look at them, but I'm perfectly happy just weighting the, the line to the size of the jig and using a super flexible tip and keeping that fishing line in, in touch with the actual line guide so I get a nice 
flowing motion in my jig. That's the key part. When you're fishing plastics, I'll tell you what, if you get again up against a good guy with the right spring bobber, he's going to crush the guy. Uh, I've, every time I've been in that situation with, uh, and not saying I outfish everybody, but I watched Hudson do it. I watched the guys who fish with the, the right system always outfish the guys with, like, say, meat sticks or some of these. There's another reason, too. The other reason is, uh, is that some of these rods that are set up with the super thin tips without spring bobbers, we had to all remember that we're on the ice. You're throwing these rods, even if it's a $100 jig stick, you're throwing them in a five gallon bucket half the time. You're moving from spot to spot and making small moves. It's rough on rods. And those are the small tips that always break, always. I, you know, I like spring bobbers. I use spring bobbers a lot. Uh, I also use soft tips, you know, as far as, you know, the, like the meat stick design that's uh, become so popular over the last 10 years. They both have their time and place. Um, the thing about the, when you have a sanded glass tip is that, you know, it, at, at the end of the day, it's not going to be lighter than what you're going to, what you can do with a spring bobber, what a spring bobber is capable of. And so with that being said, it's a, it's a nice compromise where, where that tip is built into the rod, okay? And at the end of the day, you can get a nice bounce on your presentation where that jig can move some water and not turn. And, and, and on, a, on an average bite, you know, you're gonna, get, you're gonna be able to detect the up bite, you're gonna be able to see the down bite, and you're gonna be able to get just a really nice quiver on that jig. But at the end of the day, on some of the toughest bites, you can lighten up a spring bobber even more use a lighter spring bobber and get even a more delicate presentation. And the other thing about a tip is that, whether it's a spring bobber or the rod tip, is that it isn't just a bite detection thing. This is also a presentation thing, where that tip influences the presentation. So when you do a soft, softer spring bobber, you can just, that spring bobber is doing this, but that jig's doing this, nothing, okay? Whereas if you were to do that same with the graphite tip, your jig would be moving water. Some days, you know, I mean, and there's some days where no spring bobber, no soft tip works best. Like on, you know, just using a graphite rod, because say you're fishing over an abyss and, and you want to use, say, heavier tungsten and those fish are seeing it from 10 feet away. And if you can move some more water and get them to come in from further away, get them to lift up from, from higher, you know, where they, instead of coming up foot, you can get them up to come up four feet. And they do get there and they finally meet you, boom, you know, and and you can reel the fish up faster. So, you know, the, the, all these different things complement each other. I, I, I have spring bobbers, I have glass, I have graphite, and um, yeah, some days one will work better than the other, but get, you know, good at using it all because it all has a place.